Much of the talk around central bank digital currencies is focused on their domestic impact, but CBDCs, if managed correctly, could transform the most fundamental building blocks of international economic activity. CBDCs have enormous potential, but as with any disruptive new technology, they must be designed with caution to ensure that the costs of change don't outweigh the benefits. With this caution front of mind, the pace of development is quickening. More than 100 countries, including 19 of the G20 economies, are considering introducing some form of CBDCs, with many of them right here in Asia. CBDCs are backed by the full power of the state, offering stability and avoiding many of the risks of other digital currencies like stable coins or crypto. On the surface, CBDCs will behave very much like the cash in our online bank accounts, and retail users will see little difference, but they hold the potential to streamline payments both internal and cross-border, ushering in a new era of low-cost, secure, and near-instantaneous transactions, while spurring economic growth and financial sector innovation. Among the biggest beneficiaries would be small and medium enterprises. The burden of today's long settlement times and high exchange costs often fall disproportionately on small businesses, squeezing cash flow and blunting their competitiveness. If well designed, CBDC's payment approach could help ease some of these pressures. There are still many unanswered questions. Among the most pressing, how will CBDCs coexist with the private money in the commercial banking system so that banks can continue to play their vital role, lending to the economy and supporting growth? Consensus on that point seems to be building. Many models are looking at a hybrid system where the currency is issued by the central bank, but payment services and account management are outsourced to the commercial banking sector. Although most central banks are still focused on the opportunities and impact in their domestic markets, some pilot schemes are looking beyond their borders to work out how CBDCs might work internationally, and that's where we might see the real benefit. Creating common standards and data protocols is the key to allowing CBDCs to fulfill their potential. That's easier said than done, but a number of pilot projects are already underway. Among the most advanced is Embridge, a project run by the Bank for International Settlements in collaboration with the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, the Bank of Thailand, the Digital Currency Institute of the People's Bank of China, and the Central Bank of the United Arab Emirates. Embridge, of which HSBC is a part, transferred more than 20 million US dollars across the network during a five-week trial in August and September 2022. Embridge is a blockchain-enabled platform that builds on earlier experiments. It supports real-time, peer-to-peer foreign exchange transactions and cross-border payments using CBDCs. The key feature of the platform is that it creates a fully connected network of central banks to validate wholesale transactions on behalf of domestic commercial bank participants, making the payment system faster and more efficient. The wholesale CBDC model, which combines the expertise of the commercial banking sector with the security of distributed ledger technology and the guarantee of central bank involvement, is the way forward. CBDC infrastructure like Embridge has enormous potential. It enables rapid transactions, may reduce settlement risk further, and the technology would also support advances like the tokenization of assets and associated smart contracts. But there is still much work to be done. The full impact of introducing CBDCs on financial systems and economies more broadly is still being explored. And in particular, we need to ensure that banking systems do not suffer deposit losses at introduction. Still, CBDCs offer significant potential and are therefore likely to be introduced more widely soon in one form or another. The challenge for both central and commercial banks is to design infrastructure which maximizes benefits like faster and cheaper cross-border payments, preserves the best of the current system, and critically, avoids creating new vulnerabilities in the global financial system.